Okay, so today I want to show you a little bit on how to beat Craze Cat. Preferably, probably the first Craze that you want to get is going to be an extremely useful core unit for the rest of your game. So it's pretty important to grab Craze Cat whenever you can. Now, first thing first, before I actually start into how to win Craze Cat, first thing that I want to remind you is that even if you are not confident that you can beat Craze Cat yet, I would still very highly recommend to, at the very least, enter the stage and exit the stage. If you do that, you would be able to re-challenge Craze Cat using Catamans without having to wait for the schedule. Speaking of the schedule, Craze Cat only appears on either the third of every month or three days before the month ends during Craze Festival. Since there's a pretty big gap there, if you at one point feel like that you are able to challenge Craze Cat after all, you're gonna have to wait for a very long time and that's why I recommend to unlock the Cataman stage first so that you'll be able to fight Craze Cat anytime without having to be constricted with the schedule. With that aside, let's begin on the Craze Cat guy. Now if you're worried that if my save file is over level, uh, don't be too worried. This is an extremely old footage back when I just started Returner mode. Some of the basics does have pluses on it, but not really that big. The research power and the money power are still really, really low, and most of them are not super vital. The highest plus that I have right now is plus 7 on Dragon, and even then, that's not going to be that big of a change. So even if your Dragon is lower level, that's fine. Now before I move on to the lineup that I use, I want to move to the stage overview first. The stage starts off with infinite amount of doges and snakes, pretty much coming in non-stop, and the enemies won't actually spawn until you hit the base. You can take your sweet time and gather up money and resources beforehand. Once you hit the base, that's where the main enemy starts to appear. The boss Craze Cat and their support, Leboyne and Teacher Bear. So you can see on the footage, most of the time, the order of standing is Craze Cat and then Teacher Bear and then Leboyne. Craze Cat is a pretty mid-ranged enemy with constant attack. Even if his attack aren't super devastating, it's usually enough to one-shot most meat shields. The supports Teacher Bear and Leboyne are pretty high-range enemies. Teacher Bear have the same range as Lex or Paris Cat. Meanwhile, Leboyne has the same range as Dragon Cats, but they are all outraged by Bahamut Cat and pretty much most ranged Ubers. The Leboy and the Bear will also spawn infinitely. Every certain amount of time, another Leboy will spawn, another Bear will spawn, and it'll just keep on spawning. One thing to keep in mind is that both Teacher Bear and Leboy drops a lot of money when they are killed. This is very important as I will talk about this later on. So that's pretty much about the overview of the stage. Now let's get on to the lineup and the strategy itself. As for the lineup, this is the lineup that I use to actually win the stage. There are a a lot of things that you can do with the lineup. As you can see, I leave two spaces open, leave to your interpretation on what you can use. Oh yeah, Maneko, Maneko is also there just because I have an empty slot. Honestly, you can just replace her with anything. <laughs> you can also change some of the units that they already put in into some other units that you feel might fit, which I'll also talk about later. Before we talk about what units that you can put in, I need to actually explain about why this lineup is like this first. To a lot of people, this lineup might be a little bit weird, mainly because this lineup consumes a lot of money. Look at the top row of the lineup first. The top row mainly consists of what we call as meat shields. These are mainly like cannon fodders that are only pretty much used to stall the enemies. You might have already known this if you have beaten Bun Bun on EOC3. However, I bring five of them and two of them being very very unconventional. Sumo and Ninja are not really usually people's choice of meat shields. However, since they are very very accessible and they're not really bad units to actually purchase anyways, I use them here. If you have other better meat shields that you can use in, such as upgraded rocker or upgraded rover, then you might be able to sub them on, but even then I would still highly recommend bringing a lot of meat shields. Dragon is there to damage Craze Cat, of course, but it is also very important to note that dragons are single target, which means that dragons would sometimes only hit the peons, and dragons would usually not be able to hit the bear or the boy unless Craze Cat has been knocked back. And that's where Bahamut Cat comes in. Bahamut Cat is the core important unit in the stage. Having a high range enough to outrange both Laboyan and the Teacher Bear, and also having area attack, that means it can attack past through Craze Cat. At level 20, Bahamut Cat would be able to one-shot Laboyan and it can one-shot Teacher Bear. And this is very very crucial, even if Craze Cat is the main pusher of the stage, since the Laboyan and Teacher Bear spawns infinitely, if they survive too long and ends up stacking up, it'll also be a very big problem for you as they can also help the enemy on pushing through your defenses. And that's why having Bahamut Cat to kill off these enemies are very very important. Aside from that, remember when I said that killing both Teacher Bear and Laboyne will give you a lot of money. And that is the main reason on why I did not really fear on bringing such expensive meat shields at the first place. Even if these meat shields are really really expensive, as long as you can constantly kill the Laboyne and Teacher Bear, your money would be fine. And therefore, you would want to do anything that you can to protect Bahamut to make sure that he won't die. As long as Bahamut won't die, and as long as Bahamut constantly kills the backliner enemies, then your money will pretty much always be in check. 
This is the entire basis of this lineup. The entire strategy of this lineup pretty much revolves around keeping Bahamut safe. Because that is pretty much your number one priority here. As long as Bahamut is safe, your money is in check. As long as your money is in check, you can constantly spawn your meat shields. And as long as you can constantly spawn your meat shields, Bahamut is safe. And the cycle continues. Now when actually playing the stage, first of all, I would highly recommend to bring these three power-ups. Speed up, cat CPU, and sniper. Well, speed up is optional, but mainly cat CPU and sniper. Sniper is a power-up that can help shoot an enemy every 10 seconds or so. Whichever enemy is shot will flinch back a little bit and that can help for you to keep your Bahamut alive as it can also keep Crazed Cat at bay. Cat CPU will keep on spawning every unit that you have as long as you have the money for it. However, it is also very important that once you enter the stage, you should turn off CPU until you actually want to hit the base. As before hitting the base, you want to do something called Bahamut Cat Stacking. Since the beginning of the stage, you are greeted with an infinite amount of doges and snakes. And these doges and snakes doesn't really push that hard. As you can see, even a single wildcat can stall them for a very very long time, and my wildcat is only level 20 plus 2. So what you want to do is to not push to the enemy base too soon. You want to spawn Bahamut Cat and make sure that he mostly stays on the same place. Don't spawn too much wildcats as it can also push through the enemies. You want to try to balance to have around at least 2 wildcats to protect Bahamut, but to also make sure to not push too far. If you do this correctly, you'll be able to buy enough time to spawn yet another crazy Bahamut. And if you do this really well, you could even even get 3 out. You're not really required to have 3 out, but I would say at the very least, it would be beneficial to have 2 out. If at one point, the Bahamut cats gets way too near the enemy base and you're not really sure that you can protect them anymore, then it's fine to start pushing. Again, more or less 2 Bahamut should be fine. I stack 3 here, but I think 2 should be fine. Once you decide to want to start pushing, you can start using cat CPU. And from here on out, you pretty much play hands-free. Cat CPU will try to spawn everything that you have as long as you have the money for it. And again, as long as Bahamut Cat kills the backliner, you will have the money for it. However, it is not impossible for something to screw up and you might run out of money or you might be bringing some other units that are too much of a cash hog. And in that case, sometimes it might be a good idea to keep a check on your cash and take manual control. Should everything go nice and smoothly, you should be able to win. However, if you do mess something up, perhaps the Bahamut Cat dies too fast or perhaps you completely run out of money and the enemies push through your base, remember, you can always close the Battle Cats app and terminate the program, and when you reopen Battle Cats, it'll reset you back to the beginning, and that lets you replay the stage free of charge without using any energy. You can also swap out some of the units that I have in here for some potential other better units that you might have. Again, if you have some other cheaper meat shields, for example, Burger Cat or Little Cat or Little Tank Cat, those might be able to work better than Ninja and Sumo Cat, as they all pretty much die in one shot by Crazed Cat anyways, but they are way way cheaper. Rare gacha meat shields such as Rover and Artist can also help a little bit. However, they also have a relatively long cooldown, so they might not be the best choice to completely replace a meat shield here. The rare gacha on Myoji Cat can also help weakening Craze Cat. It has a 50% chance to weaken Craze Cat, and you don't need to level it up to fully utilize him. A weakened Craze Cat can really, really slow down its push, so it's very beneficial to own on Myoji. Pogo is a very expensive meat shield, but to be fair, I'm also really using expensive meat shields here, and Pogo also has a 50% chance of surviving, so I have not really tested Pogo, but I wouldn't be surprised if he actually works. That being said, keep an eye on your cash. Salon Cat is also a very very good damager for this stage. It is pretty similar to Sexy Legs Cat, except it is way stronger and also has area attack. But if you are using Cat CPU, again, remember to check on your cash, as Salon Cat is a pretty cash hawk unit. Hacker Cat can also help a little bit on shipping down the enemies. Bat Cat can also help as a second Dragon Cat, as Bat Cat also shares the same range as Dragon Cat, and is also very very cheap. Figure Skating Cat also works very similarly to Salon Cat, except not as spammable, but is much more cost efficient. Surfer Super Cat can also help with dealing damage to Crazy Cat. It won't really be able to hit Bear and LeBoyne, but it's also very cheap and also has very solid stats overall. If you have the special Super Rare Reinforcement units, particularly Professor Cat Jobs and Sniper, they are also a very big help. Professor Cat Jobs is able to weaken Crazy Cat down to 1% of its attack. However, Cat Jobs usually doesn't survive that long, and you might want to treat it as a temporary help rather than a permanent strategy. Sniper the Cat is able to knock Crazy Cat back every so often, and is much more powerful than the Sniper Cat power-up. If you only 
him, it might be an instant win as long as you bring Muhammad Cat in. Volter Cat and Nymph Cat, who both have the long distance ability, are also able to help kill down the Teacher Bear and Leboyan, as they can utilize their long distance ability to pierce through Craze Cat and hit the backliners instead. And most long ranged Ubers can also do what Bahamut do, sometimes even better. However, that really depends on which Ubers you have, and I don't want to talk about every single Uber is in the game. You might want to do your own research on whether your Ubers can help on the stage or not. That's pretty much about all. I hope this guide helps. I have this crazed cat footage for god knows how long. It's probably ever since I begin returner mode, which is like like half a year ago at this point probably. And I really keep on forgetting to want to make a video out of this footage. So yeah, there you go. I hope this helps and I hope this strategy is in-depth enough for you to understand. I get it if this might be too in-depth for some players, but yeah, that's that's just how Battle Cats is. <laughs> and if you don't know what returner mode is, this is a currently ongoing video series I have where I restarted my game completely completely from the beginning by buying the returner pack so I can see the game back in the eyes of a newbie. You don't want to check it out, I probably have put it in the cart right here, right here somewhere in the end. If you want to see what basically is a 6 years experienced Battle Cats player replaying the game from the beginning, you might want to give it a watch. But yeah, I hope this helps and I hope you get Craze Cat. Bye bye see you later.